Hello my crafty friends and welcome back to another card making video. Today I'm showcasing the latest card kit by Simon Says Stamp and as always let's take a look on what's included. First of all you will get a blending brush as well as the craft tacky glue. You do get a regular sized ink pad. Definitely one of my favorite colors this one and I will be using it in one of my cards today. Also notice that this zipper bag comes in the kit so you can store everything inside. Now you will get some uh, pom-poms as well as a little button and some stencils. These are cloud stencils and you do get the positive and the negative. So actually both stencils and masks of clouds. Here are a couple of lovely designs. These are printed on watercolor paper so you can use either your watercolors or watercolor brushes, zigs, etc. And here is a paper full of sentiments that you can cut out and use them directly on your projects. A couple of envelopes. And let's take a look on the pattern paper full of beautiful patterns and uh, flowers perfect for spring and Easter cards. And I will be using many of them for my cards today. And let's take a look on the stamp set that comes in the kit, a really big one and it's so adorable, look at all those bunnies, I will be using many of them as focal points on my cards today and you do get many sentiments as well. Here's an envelope for your long slimline cards and finally your cardstock. I'm starting with the pattern paper. I like focusing on the pattern papers that are included in these kits just because I love papers and um, there is always a goal in my mind to use up as much as I can from the kit. I don't like to hoard it. I have my background panel ready and cut out. Now I'm working on my focal point. I just stamped one of the bunnies and I'm doing very basic coloring. I'm just adding a touch of um, pink on the ears as well as on the cheeks and I will use a light grey to add some shadow. I'm not even going to blend it, just a few strokes on one side of the bunny. And then since I always like to pop my focal points on top of my cards, I'm going to use my scissors and fuzzy cut around the bunny, leaving a little white border all around. Now I do have some leftover paper, this is from cutting out my main panel and I'm going to fuzzy cut around one of the flowers. This is going to give me an element that I can pop on top of my card but at the same time it's going to match perfectly with the background paper. Now I'm stamping my sentiment on a circle that I just cut out using one of my circle dies and I decided to go with lavender as my ink this time instead of using my go-to black ink pad just because I want to match the color of the sentiment with the colors on my card. By the way, my pattern paper is three and a half by four and three quarters and I did cut out one more panel identical in size using one of the cardstock included in the kit and I placed one on top of the other on an angle. Now I'm going to add some foam tape at the back and stick it on top of my standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. By the way, when I am creating those kit videos, I like to stay as much uh, as possible true to the kit. So I like to use only products included in the kit except of course glue or other basic dyes like rectangle dyes or circle dyes that I'm sure you all have in your arsenal. If you want to add a touch of shine on your card you can always use gems, pearls, sequins, whatever you have on hand. And here are some close-up photos on the first card for today. The second card is super easy to put together and it is a great idea when you have beautiful pattern papers that you don't want to cover up but still you want to do something extra on top of them. So I'm cutting a panel that's four and a quarter by five and a half which is going to cover up completely a standard card size. I'm going for an infinity shaker card where the whole front of the card is a shaker element. Now I do have those pouches by Waffle Flower. These are really handy to use because they do have um, that uh, fla those flaps as well as the adhesive. However, you can easily make your own just by using a thin acetate that you can wrap around your paper. I'm removing the backing of that uh, double-sided tape. I'm going to place the paper inside and wrap around those flaps. I will also make sure that I get a good contact just by rubbing it with my bone folder. And I left one side open so that I can add inside my shaker elements. 
Now on the front of uh, such a card, you can add a die cut sentiment and you are good to go after adding your shaker elements inside. However, I decided here to take it a step further. I'm stamping one of the bunnies since they are so cute and I cannot stay away from them. I'm going to fuzzy cut around it and I will add just a touch of color again, just like I did with the first card. So here I'm adding my shaker mix and you can add as much or as little as you like. And then of course I will secure everything inside by sticking the last flap. A beautiful pattern paper and some shaker elements do make a beautiful card. However, let's add those extra steps. Here I just cut out a couple of strips of paper. The pink strip is actually from the same pattern paper, from the scraps, but I used the other side around. I placed one uh, strip of paper on top of the other, the white one has the sentiment already stamped, and I'm going to stick that on top of my card. I did go with double-sided tape because I didn't want to make a mess with glue on top of the acetate. And you can see here some close-up photos on the second card for today. Again, remember, if you don't have those shaker covers, you can make your own using thin acetate. For the next card, I will use this pattern paper that you can cut in half and make two identical cards, actually. They can make the perfect mini slimline card and you can use them both vertically or horizontally. However, I'm going to use both those pieces. I'm just going to trim one of those panels to be slightly smaller. So when I place it on top of the other panel, I will end up having a border all around. But you can save that panel and just use any cardstock from your stash. Now from this pattern paper, I'm going to fuzzy cut that uh, little butterfly. This is perfect for fuzzy cutting flowers and you will see another card that I will make later on using these flowers as well. I added a tiny foam square at the back of the butterfly, I'm going to pop it on top of my card just to add some dimension and something extra on an otherwise very simple card. I also stamped one of the sentiments from the stamp set included and I fuzzy cut around it. And another way to enhance a card if it is so simple is to add some gems. So here I'm just creating a little trail. Don't forget if you do enjoy my videos to click the like button. It is the easiest way to show your support and it does help my channel grow. So here are some close-up photos on the third card for today and let's make a few more. For my next card I'm focusing on those two bunnies who are kissing, they are so adorable. I'm going to stamp them, fuzzy cut them and then again I did very basic coloring, a little touch of pink on the ears and the cheeks, a touch of grey shadow and I also used a very fine black marker to add some eyelashes on one of the bunnies. I fuzzy cut around them making sure that I leave some white border. And now let's play with the clouds. For this card I'm going to use the masks of the clouds. I'm just adding a little bit of uh, tape on one side. I'm making sure that this is not very sticky. Just uh, place it on top of your uh, cloth. And uh, I'm going to place it temporarily on top of my background so that I can do some inking. For the inking, I'm going to use one of my bigger blending brushes. I'm not actually using the one included in this kit, just because it's so small. And um, I'm also going to use the ink that was included in the kit, so you can see the color better. I think it's perfect for creating a very subtle sky on your background. Now, I'm going over the clouds. I'm not going for the perfect blending. I like to have some splotches when I create my sky since it adds more to the look. So I'm just going to lift the clouds and see what we have. And this is the perfect subtle background for creating little scenes with all those bunnies as well as the grass and the flowers that you have on this stamp set. So for this card I'm going to uh, use the sentiment and this is just die cut from the paper full of sentiments. I'm using a thin strip of foam tape at the back and these thin strips are from uh, Waffle Flower, really handy. And on top of my sentiment I'm going to place the bunnies. I did stamped, colored and fuzzy cut one of the hearts, I'm going to place it there. Again, this one has some tiny foam tape at the back. And now let's add something extra on an otherwise adorable card to make it even more cute. So I'm going to use a couple of those uh, pom-poms 
and I'm going to stick them on their tails. I'm using glossy accents for that since I know it is a very strong glue and it's going to hold them nicely. Place it on your card base and this is a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half and here are some close-up photos. And now let's move on to the last card for today and probably my favorite. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below and let me know which one of all those cards was your favorite. So here I'm using this pattern paper that has ABCs and numbers and it is always adorable to use for baby cards and that's why I'm going with the baby bunny and the parent. This would make a great design for a newborn kid or even for a Mother's Day card. So I just cut out a circle at the center of my panel and I'm placing it on top of a card base that I created with the grey cardstock from the kit. I did stamp the bunnies again just like I did for the previous cards. No much of coloring, mainly stayed white with a touch of pinks and a little bit of grey. I'm placing that inside that window. And I'm looking for the perfect sentiment. I decided to go with there is no bunny like you, which I think it's super appropriate. I like to place my sentiment banner dies on top and just cut out what I need from those uh, sentiment uh, printouts and uh, I'm going to place it on top of my card using foam tape at the back and here comes some extra fuzzy cutting. I just cut out a few flowers from this pattern paper. You will find bigger and smaller ones. I went with the bigger ones and any one that you decide to cut out, it's going to match beautifully with the rest of the designs, since the little details on the background match perfectly with the colors of the bigger flowers. I also went with three flowers since I like odd numbers and I'm just creating a cluster there. You can definitely stop here, but if you do have any leaf dies, which I'm sure you have in your stash, you can cut out a couple. I just cut them out from white cardstock, I didn't want to introduce any new color, but you can definitely go with green if you like. And since I had those gems from the previous card on my desk, I did add a few just to add a little bit of shine. So these were all the cards for today, just like always down below in the description you will find the full list of all the supplies that I used. Thank you all so much for joining me today, I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired and that you all have a lovely day.